guys learning with rich here in this video we are going to uh, learn how to place non hosted air terminals in our project so previous video so we have learned how to place a hosted air terminal so this time around we're gonna place non hosted air terminals okay so we are going to place air terminals in a room that does not have a drop ceiling so as we place the air terminal, so we are going to modify the air terminal parameters and then we are going to work with the airflow schedule. Alright, so let's get started. So what I'm going to do is, um, um, I'm going to open the schedule. So I'll go to the schedule quantity. So I'm going to open the space airflow schedule. So let me just open that one. All right, so this is our schedule. So what I want to do is I want to place a non-hosted air terminal to space 115. Okay, so let's say, for example, you don't yet memorize the spaces here in your project. So that's the reason why I have opened the air flow schedule, the space air flow schedule. So for me to be able to just simply look for uh, space 115, so I'll just need to click that one. And then if I go back again to the level 1 HVAC plan design plan, so you will now see that it's now highlighted here. Okay, so this is the space. So this is where I'm going to place the non-hosted air terminal. Alright, so let's do this. So what I'm going to do is um, I select the air terminal. And then I look for a non-hosted family, which is this one. The other one is hosted. See, there's there's a hosted there so the other supply diffuser here is non hosted so I'm gonna look for let's say this one so I select supply diffuser rectangular face round neck 24 by 24 8 neck so I just select that one and I'm now gonna place that air terminal okay so let's say for example I'm just gonna make sure that the place on uh, tag on placement is selected and then I'm going to place it like um, about somewhere here. So I just click. Right. And then after that, I'll just select here, modify. So that's it. Okay. And then you will notice here the tag is not clear. So I'm just going to select this tag. And then I'm going to edit the family. I'll just need to nudge the airflow there below. I'm just going to nudge that and then load it back again to the project. Just override it and there you go. So that I'll be able to see it nicely. So how about I click that and then so maybe I'll just tidy up. Okay. Right. And then you will notice that we are on the floor plan. So the reason why we are on the floor plan, we don't have ceiling on this uh, particular part. And if this is a non-hosted family, so by default, the height of that is zero. So by default, it's on the floor when you place it. So that's why we are going to select that one. And then we are going to change the height of this. So let's say um, 8 feet or 9 feet. So I just type 9, enter. And then I select here, modify. All right, so if you want to change the height of that, so let's say I want that to be 8 feet, so I just need to click that again and then just go back again to the offset from host. So let's say I'll just type 8, enter, and that's it. So it's already changed. And now I'm going to change here the flow. So I'm going to select that one, and then I'm going to type in here 360 CFM, okay? So as you can see, the tag also updates here. Now, so let us copy this. So I'm going to select the air terminal. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to pick just beside, move my cursor down, and then I'm going to type 20 for 20 feet. And then I'll just select here, modify. That's it. And then um, I'm going to select both. Click one, hold control, and then click the other air terminal. And then copy it, pick the base point, and then you go to the right or to the direction that you want to copy, and then just type the distance. So let's say 14 feet, 
Then I'll select modify. And then I'm just going to tag my air terminals here. So I'm going to select uh, tag by category, no leader line, uncheck that. And then let us now pick our air terminals. All right. And maybe I just need to uh, move this. Set one. Okay, so I selected the three tags because there's an auto align. So if you are going to move or uh, if you're going to drag the tag, you'll be able to auto align that or you'll be able to see a line there that will align your tag. So as you can see, if I'm going to hold my left click and then drag to the right. Oops. Can't see. All right, so that's the one. There you go. And then select your modify. All right, now aside from um, selecting your air terminals here and then changing the flow here on the uh, options bar, so you can also create an embedded schedule to your project. Okay. So you can also do that so that instead of changing it from the options bar, so you can just do it on the embedded schedule. So that is one way of uh, changing the airflow. So by using an embedded schedule, you enhance the schedule by using this to show data like system type, type mark and flow for individual diffusers in space. So what we want to do here on our space airflow schedule, so we want to add these individual air terminals that we have added to our project here on our space airflow schedule. So what we need to do is to create an embedded schedule. So to do that, from the properties here, just click the edit on the embedded schedule just click that one and then you tick the embedded schedule box and then we're gonna use air terminals and then let's click the embedded schedule properties okay so here I want to add the let's say the system classification so let me add that one so you can change that later on by the way so you can edit that. So system classification, what else? So I want to add the type, double click, the mark as well, and the flow. So let's look for the flow. All right. Okay, and then um, I want to sort it by mark. Okay, and then I just select, okay. So you will notice our schedule here will change. So I select, okay, and then okay. And there you go. You see, you just added now your uh, individual air terminals to your uh, schedule, to your space airflow schedule. Okay, so you will notice that it's now updated and the list and list the data for individual air terminals in each space. Okay. So the next thing that we're gonna do is let's uh, modify the airflow capacity of the diffuser here on the air terminals that we have placed on the lower left corner of the building. Okay, so let's try to do that one. So I'm just gonna change this, the 110. So I'm gonna change this one. So let's say this is, notice that automatically the values here will gonna be updated as well. So I change this to uh, 450, enter. There you go. So as you can see, it's now changed. <coughs> And now for this one, so let's say uh, 330, enter. Okay, so I just make this 330 as well, 330. There you go. Okay, so it's now within the actual calculated uh, airflow. Okay, so each change that we have done on our schedule, it's uh, change immediately dynamically and immediately propagates throughout your project so you do not need to go back to the floor plan to change the airflow because you already changed that here on the schedule so 
it's already updated. So the floor plan, the whole model is already updated when you modify the schedule. So this digital database information source is the integral concept of the building information modeling. Okay, so let us now go back to our level one HVAC plan. And that's the one that I'm talking about. As you can see, it's now updated. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an air handling equipment. So if I'm going to select the zone here, which is this one, so I select, by the way, the space is still selected there. So I'm going to select the space airflow schedule. So I'm just going to click on the title bar here and then go back again to the level one. What? It's still selected. Or right. just escape. All right. So I'll just select this zone here. So I click that one. So this is the zone. And then look at the properties here. So if I'm going to hover my pointer there, as you can see, the calculated cooling load here is 3.9 ton. So this is where we are going to base the equipment that we are going to place or the equipment that we will be using to supply this zone here. So the calculated here is 3.9 tons. So I'm going to select the system. I select the mechanical equipment. And then from the type selector, I'm going to look for 4 tons. Okay? Because the calculated uh, cooling load there is 3.9. So I need 4 tons. So I'm going to select this one. And then I'm just going to press space bar twice before I place it. So 1, 2, so that... Okay, the supply is going inside and then the return is on the right side. So I'm going to place it somewhere here and then I select here modify. Oops, just cancel this one. Again, since this is a non-hosted family, by default, when you place your equipment, it's on the floor. So if I'm going to open this section here, go to view. So you will see that our equipment is below. That's why I'm going to select this. And then let's change the height of that to, let's say, 9 feet, enter. There you go. So that's now our equipment. So it's from here. There you go. So I'm just going to measure. So that's your 9 feet. Okay. Right. So basically, that's how you place your uh, non-hosted air terminals and then your equipment. Okay. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. On our next video, we are going to create a secondary supply air system. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.